sitting on the porch resting when she first saw him. Not a tall man, a kind of softness about him, and round blue eyes and a round face. A sunburned mustache that drooped and made him look a little sad. He came walking out of the city with the graceful towers rising behind him into a hot blue sky. And for a moment, he seemed unreal. Excuse me. Yes? I'm looking for a place to stay. There doesn't seem to be many such places any here in the city. I noticed your sign. Oh, yes, the sign. Excuse me, is anything wrong? No, there's nothing wrong, but... The sign says rooms. You, you do rent them. Oh, yes, that's right. Forgive me, I, I feel fine. I, I just wasn't myself for a minute. Of course, I have a room. Three, in fact. And you can have your choice. Oh, that's fine. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Vincent Deem. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Deem? I'm, I'm sorry, child. Why don't you come in? I'll, I'll show you the rooms. Thank you very much. I'm very anxious to... To get in out of the sun. <laughs> this room's just like the others, Mr. Deem, except for the video set. And there's a health ray over the bed. Oh, it's very nice, Mrs. Childs. And the windows are shielded glass, of course. Uh, how much is this room, Mrs. Childs? <laughs> a little more than the others. It's 30 credits a month. I'll take it. Uh, would you like the money now? If you don't mind. Oh, not at all. Yeah, I'm sure I have some here in my pocket. Oh, I, I forgot. What's wrong, Mr. Dean? Oh, nothing, nothing. I, I'm i afraid I have nothing but very large bills, that's all. I'll have one changed later today and pay you this evening, if that will be satisfactory. All right. I imagine you want to unpack. <laughs> I, I might as well. Oh, Mrs. Childs, one more thing. Does the price of 30, uh, uh, 30 credits include meals? Yes. Oh, oh that's fine. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure I'll enjoy dining with you. And uh, is it uh, Mrs. Childs? Yes, and my husband works at the vitamin plant about a mile from here. He, he should be home for lunch any minute. Well, I'll be looking forward to meeting him. Yes. Well... Please excuse me, Mr. Deem. Why, Mrs. Childs? What's wrong? Sorry? Got that shower ready? Oh, David, you're, you're late, dear. I thought you... Thought what? David, we have a new boarder. Oh? His name is Deem. Vincent Deem. He arrived this morning. Sorry. Is anything the matter? Has this fellow got you upset? Oh, David, it's ridiculous, really. He's... He's very polite, but for some reason, I, I can't explain it. He, he frightens me. Where is he? I'd like to get a look at him. He should be here for lunch. I didn't hear him go out. Well, what's it all about? What upsets you? Well, his clothes, for one thing. <laughs> his clothes? When he came in, he was wearing a black coat with a little black velvet collar, and the sun was so hot. And there were small differences in the things he wears, in, in the cut of them. Well, they... They're just not like ours. Only I can't tell you exactly why. It's almost as if he just reached his hand into some ancient refuse bin and just took out the first thing he found. I wouldn't have believed it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, here we are only three years from the dawning of the great new technological era of the 21st century, and you're seeing ghosts in old clothes. Oh, I was afraid you'd laugh. <laughs> David went back to work, still laughing to himself. There was nothing wrong with the guy. Sari tried to rest and couldn't. The sun, even through the filtered glass, hurt her eyes. Mr. Deem hadn't come back, but she wanted to get out of the house. So she took the moving sidewalk to the market. Perhaps it was the heat or being in the house too long. Anyway, she spent an hour at the market. It felt better by the time she got to the robot checker. Mrs. Childs? There was a friend of yours in here about an hour ago. A friend? Well, who was it, Ruth Harris? No, Mr. Vincent Deem. He wished to write a check and cash it, but I had no record of him in my circuits. He gave you as a reference, and so I cashed the check. I hope that was all right with you. 
Yes, Robert, of, of course. He was very strange. He wished to know what year it was. I told him 1997, and he seemed happy and surprised. He asked what year? Very nice to see you again, Mrs. Childs. Come in often. Next customer, please. <laughs> The sun was still beating down, but the street felt cold. As Sari walked home, little hands of coldness seemed to run up and down her back. She went into the house and listened, couldn't hear a thing. But she knew that he was in the house. He was in the house, and he wanted to know what year it was. <laughs> Say, Beam, uh, uh, what line of work are you in? Insurance. Good business. In this city? No. In another city. Oh. Are you planning to be here permanently? Yes, I believe I am. I had to leave that other city. I, I had some trouble. It was over a woman, but you don't want to hear about that. Oh, well, go ahead, Mr. Dean. We don't mind if it'll make you feel any better. Well, a man does have to talk to someone. A woman worked in my office, you see. A very fine woman. I loved her very much. But she was married and had two very small children. She knew she had a duty to her children and her husband. There was nothing between us, you understand. Absolutely nothing but deep affection. But her husband... Well, he, he found out and we had words. I felt it was better to leave the city. It, it was very unpleasant. So, you came here to make a new start? Yes. Well, I can understand that, Mr. Deem. Can't you, Sari? Yes, David, of course I can. Mr. Deem left the house early the next morning. He said he was going to visit the various insurance companies and see about getting a job. And Sari, left behind in the house, felt like a spy because she knew she was going to explore his room. She had to know. One by one, she opened the drawers in the bureau. Shirts, handkerchiefs, socks, two suits in the closet and his black overcoat, the suitcase on the floor. Everything seemed to be in order. She tapped the suitcase with her foot, and then bent down and opened it. She looked inside. Operator, Mr. Childs, please hurry. Mr. Childs, he's in the pyrodoxing department. Sorry, for Pete's sake, you know I'm up to my neck in work this morning. I had to come all the way over from the vats to answer. Sorry. What's wrong with you? Move up closer to the screen. David, I looked at his suitcase. James? Yes, David, he's... He's got, got things in it. Things? Sorry, what exactly are you talking about? The things in his bag. The, the three wilted red roses. And the gun. Oh, I, I've, I've seen pictures of them. I've looked them up in the historical encyclopedia. Say that again. A gun. And three flowers. Wilted flowers. Three red roses. At least I think they're roses. Oh, David... Sorry. Are you sure? I tell you, I looked it up in the book, David. I looked up the list of all the things destroyed or outlawed during the bombings. I thought I remembered, but I wanted to make sure. You're right, Sorry. I know you're right. There haven't been any guns on the face of the earth since the war. There haven't been any flowers since... since the war of 1980. <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand this. But I'll come right home. Stay there, Sorry. I'm coming home. David? David? Mrs. Child? Oh. oh, hello, Mrs. Child. It's a bit cooler out this morning. I thoroughly enjoy it. Mrs. Child, you look ill. Your face is so white. <laughs> Sorry, I'm home. David, be careful. Don't come in here. 
Be quiet, Mrs. Giles. Sorry, what in the name of heaven? It... Dean. It... Is that a gun, Mr. Giles? A weapon that can kill you. Come in, please. Sit down over there. David, I'm sorry. I, I tried to warn you. Never mind, darling. Dean, if you've hurt her, I swear... Sit down. That's better. Where do you come from? From the year 1979. But that's impossible. No, David. You see the gun in his hand? And the flowers upstairs. She's quite correct, Mr. Charles. But how could it be? If you'll check the list in the historical encyclopedia, the record of things destroyed or outlawed after the war of 1990, you will find listed a time warp machine designed in the year 1977 by scientists at the Los Oros Physics Institute. I was the horticulturist in charge of the grounds and gardens. I entered the machine one year before the war. They might... They just might... Risk sending a man after me. But why did you come to this year? Did you know that you were going to end up here? No. No. No, I lied to you when I said I worked in insurance. But I told you the truth about the woman. She worked in the physics institute also, in, in one of the labs. I hated the man she'd married. I wanted to marry her desperately, but she said she had to stay with him. Then she said she was sorry for me. And so one night, when the moonlight came down white on the mountains back of the laboratories, down on the rose gardens that were tended so carefully in the middle of that rocky desert to give the people working there just a, a touch of beauty, in the middle of that night, when her husband was working late and she and her little girl stopped by in their automobile to pick him up, I was waiting in the shadow of the building with a gun I had stolen. Th this gun. I remember seeing their faces, the three of them, white in the moonlight. I raised the gun. And the moon struck the barrel like white fire. And I shot. And I shot again. And again. And again. And killed them all. 